You could be earning thousands of dollars more if you decide to negotiate your step level when accepting a government job offer. Before getting into the details, I want you to understand the negotiation is done after the tentative job offer, not during the interview, not after you receive a, a final job offer, but when you get that tentative job offer. Now, speaking of negotiations, there are actually three areas that you could potentially negotiate, and they are one, step level, two, your start date, and three, the leave accrual rate, which is basically how many hours of leave are you earning per pay period. Also remember, you cannot negotiate your GS grade level, only your step level. And there's three different circumstances where this could happen. The first one is you have superior qualifications. And you might be thinking, hey, it's me. Of course I'm superiorly qualified, but it's not as simple as that. Here are some ways that you can be superiorly qualified. You have a graduate degree relevant to the field. You have lots of years of experience in your field. You have numerous certifications in your field. You have published work in peer-reviewed journals related to your field. And if you want to negotiate your step level because you're superiorly qualified, I recommend typing that up in a memo explaining exactly why you feel that way and then sending it to the HR. Speaking of a negotiation memo, I have a template of that memo. Also, I have a federal resume template and some other documents that will help assist you get a federal government job if you visit the course link in the description below. The second one is when the agency has a special need for you. Here are some ways that could be the case. A position is hard to fill. There is a high turnover rate for the position. Local labor market is weak. Agency has listed position as a critical occupation. The third way is if you were earning a higher salary in your previous job, and you would have to prove that by submitting a pay stub or an earning statement showing exactly how much you were making, and then asking the agency if they would match your salary. So if you're a GS9, maybe to match your salary, it would have to be a step four or a step five, and that way they can consider that option. Another example is if you were making $56,000 a year at your last job, and you receive an offer for a GS7 step one, which has a salary of 44,000 a year, well, that would be a $12,000 a year loss if you actually accepted that offer. So what you could do in this circumstance is prove that you are making $56,000 a year and request a GS7 Step 9, which has a $56,000 a year salary. This is done all the time, so do not feel guilty asking. People even get Step 10, right? More commonly than you would imagine, people actually negotiate their way and they're able to get a Step 10. I strongly believe that you should avoid taking a pay cut when entering the federal government. Now understand with any of these three ways that I listed, you are still gonna need to provide supporting documentation, right? Whether that's the memo, whether that's the pay stubs, whatever you say in that email, it needs to be backed up. So keep that in mind. So you can do all of this and still get rejected because there's no obligation. The federal agency does not have to negotiate with you. So what are some of the reasons you could be rejected? Well, the agency could have budget restraints. Maybe you don't have any experience and this is your first job. Or you're currently unemployed. Or a lot of strongly qualified applicants apply to the same job, so they have lots of options to pick from. If you're in a situation where HR just flat out refuses to negotiate, you do have another option. You can request to speak directly with the hiring manager to see if perhaps you can change their mind. Now this could be a risk, sure, but if you're on the verge of not accepting the job, then you might as well try this approach. So why is step negotiation so important to do? Well, let's take a look at the most extreme situation with the GS-15 pay grade. The difference between GS-15 step one and GS-15 step 10 is over $39,000 a year. Even on the lower side, such as the GS-7, the difference between step one and step 10 is over $14,000 a year. Now, if you were able to earn fourteen dollars to $39,000 more a year, wouldn't you go through the extra effort to make that happen? Also keep in mind that negotiation is reserved for new people entering into the government. So if you've already been working a government job for the last seven or 10 years, you're not gonna be able to negotiate when you accept another offer. Now, if you're watching this and you're seriously considering a federal government job, you should also be aware of sign-on bonuses. And right now we have sign-on bonuses up to $20,000 for some job announcements. And if you would like to know which ones those are, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.